Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian from JMP Cycles. In order to make power, you need three things. You need fuel, air, and spark. In order to tune all those things, you really want to look at a Dynojet Power Commander. What it does is it allows you to properly program the fuel and oxygen levels to give your bike the most power and efficiency it is possible to get out of it. Now, for this install, we are going to remove the tank and the airbox. If you don't know how to do that, check out the link in the description for our K&N air filter install video. Now, let's get started on taking this tank off. Tools you'll need, a five millimeter Allen wrench, four millimeter Allen wrench, a three millimeter Allen wrench, a small flat head screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a 10 millimeter socket with ratchet and a good pair of needle nose pliers. Now, in order to take your tank off, you'll need to remove the two five millimeter Allens up at the front, and there's one 10 millimeter bolt in the back. I'm just gonna use my 10 millimeter socket to take that off. Now, once you have that loose, apply some upward pressure on the tank and pull that bolt straight out. After you remove that bolt holding the back of the tank on, we need to do a couple things. We need to remove any vent hoses, the power line connecting to the fuel pump, and eventually underneath the tank, we'll also need to remove the quick disconnect uh, fuel line. Let's start off with these vent hoses and see uh, where it goes. So for these, you'll want to either take a pair of pliers or if you can do it with your fingers, pull down on this little collar and then pull the hose straight off. All right, now for this one, this is on here pretty good. So if I, I probably get it off if I either pry with a small screwdriver or if I do some more pull-ups and eat my Wheaties. But I don't want to damage this hose, so for the sake of this uh, install, let's just pull the hose all the way out. When you reinstall everything, just make sure you reroute it back down. So let's just pull this out. It's not too bad, there you go, there you have it. Last part I have to do back here is just remove the, uh, the fuel pump line. Now to disconnect the fuel pump harness, all you need is either your finger or a small flathead screwdriver lift this little tab up and pull it straight out. All right, now that we have everything in the rear disconnected, we can lift up the fuel tank, disconnect the fuel line, and put the tank off to the side. So again, be cautious when you lift up the tank. You don't want to scratch anything. I put a little towel underneath because we're probably going to lose a couple drops of fuel when we remove this. And then I'm going to pop this clip off. So there's a little retainer clip that holds your fuel line on. After that, you simply slide it off. And you'll see a little bit of fuel comes out. At this point, we can lift the tank completely off and set it on the ground. All right, with the tank off, now have the exposed air box. To remove the air box, you'll need to remove the eight bolts holding on the lid, the air sensor, which just use a small flathead screwdriver and pull the plug on it, and then the base of your air box. In order to do that, you'll actually need to access the throttle bodies through these small holes on the side of the frame. All right, so I just got my three millimeter out. I'm backing this Allen out. These are pretty long threads. Now you have two clamps. You have one that's holding these two throttle bodies and these two uh, throttle bodies to the, uh, to the air box. So once you remove both sides, all you need to do is lift up on the air box to remove it from the top of the engine. I'm actually gonna walk around the other side to get a little bit more leverage and pull up on this. All right, I'm actually gonna start off on one side here and just kind of pry that up. And you'll feel it. it's just a rubber boot on the, uh, the throttle body there. So you just wanna pull up until you get them all. Now that you can tell it's loose, we can set it down for a moment. This is also a good time to note that we don't wanna drop anything in here. And if you can, maybe stuff a little towel there just to prevent anything from falling in. Once I get it loose to about this point, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna remove the bracket and the, uh, the breather hose from the back of the air box. Let's do that now. I'll need to get a 10 millimeter uh, socket here and then just some man hands for the back. All right, let's remove the 10 millimeter bolt holding the front bracket of the air box on. All right, once we have that 10 millimeter removed and all hoses removed, you should simply just be able to lift up and out. So it's pretty easy. If you see the throttle bodies, they're about 20% open. I don't want to force these, uh, these valves open at all and strip any gears. So I'm just going to throw a, a little line of tape over this. That way we don't have to worry about uh, dropping anything down into the engine while we're working. All right, once you unbox your power commander, you're going to find this big mess of wire. But 
it's not as intimidating as it looks. So all these little plugs here are actually gonna plug into your injector. So you'll see you have eight of them. Uh, so it's two per injector. You'll have a, a lead, a, a power hotline, and then a ground. Uh, and then your main, the main unit of the body. So kind of a good advice and what I would recommend is kind of lay it down on the bike to map out where you're going to put it. You know, the main, uh, the main body is actually gonna sit somewhere in your tail section underneath your uh, passenger seat. And then to make it clean, you'll wanna run these through and to kind of hide the wires. So let's start by, uh, by putting this underneath the tail section and run the wires through. All right, before we put this in the tail section, you actually wanna just install these two little Velcro strips. Uh, don't peel off both sides yet, just do the one side and place it on each corner of the unit. Keep in mind, if you ever wanna add any add-ons, don't cover up these holes in the back. And we'll get to that a little bit later. That's if you wanna use a quick shifter ignition module or the auto-tune unit. But once you have those on, just find a good home for it under here. Now there is a mess of wires under here from a, a tail tidy that the previous owner must have done. We'll get to that later. But I'm gonna set this in the back here, just for proper placement, and then we'll start to run the wires. All right, once you get that all the way fed through, you'll see how these kind of go like a tree. Plan this from going left to right. So the, the closest to the, uh, the cable here is going to go on your furthest left cylinders, and then it's going to lay down just like that. So it's kind of good to just pre-map it before we start plugging everything in. Next, we're going to want to look at hooking up our ground and our power. All right, make sure that's snug and secure. Uh, we're not gonna be removing that again, so you make, wanna make sure it's tight the first time. Now we can actually go to uh, starting to plug and unplug your fuel injectors and plug them into the uh, power commander harness. Now before we connect these, we need to locate where the actual fuel injection uh, connections are. So it's gonna be these four right here. Let's do one at a time so we don't mix them up, but you'll wanna disconnect one and then we'll plug it into the uh, Power Commander harness, again, one at a time. If your man hands aren't working, pull out your pliers. Carefully squeeze that plug and pull. Now with your injector wires pulled, all you need to do is match the two plugs from your Power Commander wiring harness to those, uh, those empty plugs that you just pulled apart. Just snap them together. All right, now we got the three remaining injectors connected. You're gonna to wanna to take this plug here, and this will actually go to the throttle position sensor. Now on this bike, there is two. There's an upper and a lower, and the instructions for each bike may be different, so make sure to check that out. But for this, it's gonna be the lower. So we're gonna disconnect that, which is really hidden under here, and plug it into the harness. All right, our last step is to hook up some type of power. All right, so now we have to connect this to the gear position switch, which is located in between your number two and number three injector and this six pin port here. So you wanna unplug that. And for this bike, we wanna look for the green and red wire. Using the supplied posi tap, you need to connect this to the blue wire. Once you have that connected, reconnect your gear position sensor.
and then check all your other connections and make sure that they're tight and connected. This will be our last step before rebuttoning up everything and putting our tank back on. Once your new power commander is connected, reverse the process by putting your tank and bodywork back on. Then you need to pull out your laptop. So when you buy the power commander, it comes with its step-by-step -step instructions on how to download their software to get new maps that you can change at the click of a couple buttons. It's really nice. So they have preloaded programs which you can download into your power commander that you just installed that will adjust the air and fuel based off their recommendations for your bike, air, uh, air filter, and exhaust that you choose. If you wanted to take it one step further, you could take it to a dyno to have it specifically tuned to your bike, which this is all very capable of doing. But what's really nice about this is if you want to run different exhausts or maybe different uh, fuel, if you're running a race gas for a track day or a race bike, you're able to toggle between maps very quickly. So there you have it. It's, it's actually not too bad of an install. It's a little tedious with taking the tank off, but just a couple step-by-step -step instructions that they provide pretty well, it'll get you there. Uh, don't forget, you get horsepower every three per sticker you put on your bike. Uh, these are available right now at jpcycles.com. Thanks for watching.